And a very useful technique has been used traditionally for looking at population genetics of Staph aureus. So MLST, multi-locus sequence typing, gives you kind of a snapshot of the sequence diversity within the genome. It looks at seven different housekeeping genes and allows you then to discriminate between uh, Staph aureus uh, strains. Uh, there's now over 3,000 sequence types actually which have been identified for, for Staph aureus. You d define a, a new sequence type by the fact that it differs at at least one single nucleotide among the seven housekeeping genes that have been sequenced. Okay. Um, so this has given us a good sense of the overall population diversity for the Staph aureus species. More recently now we're using more whole genome sequencing, so we're getting much better resolution of the diversity across the entire Staph aureus species. Uh, it has a largely clonal population structure, and by that I mean that it evolves and diversifies by mutation uh, more often than it does by recombination. The recombination I mean the horizontal acquisition of short uh, stretches of, of DNA um, between different strains, which then recombine and replace uh, existing stretches of, of DNA uh, within the strain. So it involves more by clonal mutation than it does by recombination. And this is what we call an e-burst diagram, which shows you the kind of the clonal structure within the species. So each of these uh, circles here represents a different clonal complex of closely related Staph aureus uh, sequence types. And some of the mo uh, most abundant ones are indicated here by these large uh, circles here. Okay, so this is a phylogenetic tree which we reconstructed uh, a few years ago now to represent the overall um, phylogeny across the species. And we took representative strains of Staph aureus from humans to try and capture as much of the diversity that we could, and representative strains from, uh, from livestock, including ruminants, the cow, sheep and goats, uh, and birds as well. And <coughs> what we can see here is this is a radiating phyl phylogenetic tree. So this here is the indication of the root of the tree. Now the root of the tree is, uh, indicates um, the ancestral state for the entire uh, phylogeny. So all the contemporary strains, which again are represented around the tips of the tree, this is the, the uh, clonal ancestor for all of those, uh, for all of those strains. So working out from, from the root of the tree. Represented in, in yellow are the human strains. Uh, represented in red are the ruminant strains. And represented in blue are the uh, avian strains. So what you can see here, using this uh, program called BEAST, uh, which stands for a Bayesian Evolutionary Analysis by Sampling Trees, which uh, which Dr. Lysett is going to tell you an awful lot more about um, this afternoon. But it allows you to have a kind of time frame uh, on the evolution of all of these strains uh, over uh, their evolutionary history. So what I want you to get from this tree is that you can see by all of the yellow branching in the tree that most of the diversity, or a, a great deal of the diversity across the tree, is taken up by human strains. Okay? Uh, and what BEAST allows us to do is to predict the ancestral state for the tree in terms of its host association. And you can see again by the, the way these uh, branches and internal nodes are colored that it's predicted to be human. Okay, so the ancestral state for Staph aureus, based on this representative set of sequences, predicted to be uh, of, of human origin. <coughs> However, you can see at these points here in the tree, these stars here, that the capacity to infect uh, ruminants has evolved on multiple occasions during the evolutionary history of Staph aureus. Uh, and this presumably has happened through human to animal host jump events, followed by adaptation of the bacteria to their new host. So these are indicated here. 
These stars here in the tree represent these host jump events um, which have occurred. And because we have a time frame, and, and I should say that this tree is based on the multilocus sequence typing data. So a relatively small amount of sequence data, about three and a half kilobases of, of sequence data. And because we have a time frame on this, because we've used a, a, a mutation rate which we've calculated for the Staph aureus species, we can estimate when these host jump events happened. And the earliest of these host jump events we predict happened about five and a half thousand years ago, uh, which fits reasonably well with the estimates of when domestication first happened and then the spread of, of agriculture happened in, in the Neolithic era. So presumably there are much more opportunities uh, for cross-species host jumps between humans and, and livestock when they started essentially living in the same uh, environments. So that's what we, that's what we think um, happened during the evolutionary history of these animal, animal strains. That essentially there was Staph aureus has co-evolved with its human host for a long period in, in evolutionary terms, but then there's been host species jumps which have happened, leading to strains which are now endemic in those livestock populations.